something special about being a parent when you ask your child at the last minute? To sing a song that you love, something that will move you. When you ask your child and they are attentive to your word, that means that you have done the right that will move not only them, but your grandchildren and your grandchildren, yes. your great-grandchildren. It's special when you talk to your children. Yes. But it's, it's celebratory when you listen <clears throat> and you can hear back the lessons that you gave them years ago. Yes. That's the difference of coming to church yes. and coming to Christ. We are in the 14th chapter of Acts. Fourteen chapter minutes. Verse one. And it came to pass in Iconium that they both went together into the synagogue of the Jews and so spoke that a great multitude, both of the Jews and also of the Greeks, believed. Gracious Lord, we ask now that your word become more relevant in this hour than it has been in the last years in our life. Open us up, move us, show us the difference of our relationship where it was and where it will be through this new year. In all these things we ask in Jesus' name. Jesus. Amen. 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 Sometimes it's about the conversations you have with folks that cause you to see how they were and why they are right now. Sat down with was privileged to talk to Deacon Revere on yesterday. And he told me about being a trucker and being in an accident. He said he made mention that he survived, but on top of that, he said it was Christ that kept his hand on me. Then I was reminded of a friend, Michael Williams, who was a truck driver now, drives across country, who was in a should have been a catastrophic truck driving accident with the rig hanging over the overpass. Mm. Him sitting on the windshield mm. and it should have gave way because of the accident and his body weight. <coughs> Talking to him weeks after, he said he couldn't do nobody else right. but God. Yeah. There's a difference when we have been to church all of our lives. And then understand the reason why Christ is so evident when we come into the building. Yeah. <clears throat> some things, some things that we go through, have gone through, are a direct result of the adults that are in our lives. But then after we have heard the songs of worship and the preach word, then we come to a realization and an intervention of Christ. That's the difference of coming to church and then coming to Christ. We come to church because there were Mother's Day, Easter, Father's Day. Well, I don't say Father's Day because people don't come to church again. <laughs> and Christmas. You, you, you come to church and you can see the best fashions. You can hear some good conversations. You can hear some curse words strung together that you didn't think should be strung together in the church parking lot. That's because we come to church. All right. Then, then you can come to church and you can see two people get married and the whole world know that these two folks shouldn't be together because they're the craziest persons in the town. <laughs> but it can only be God that had put them together because nobody else would walk down the aisle with them or live with them because they're so crazy. <laughs> that, that, that's just some things of coming to church. Then we have the issue of coming to Christ. If we look in the first verse of the 14th chapter, it says that they, Barnabas and Paul, went together into the church. It, it's a good thing to have somebody who will walk with you. 
It's a greater thing to have somebody who is going to pray with you and stand by you. It's another thing to have somebody who believes in God the same way you believe in God. And they trust the Holy Spirit just a little bit more than you do. We have that friend that will push us when we want to walk away. When we think that church is the only thing that we should experience. These are the folks who push us to understand that Christ is more than a reason for a season. He's a reason to live a good life. If, if, we, if we understand the scripture, I'm going to tell you, keep your Bibles open because we're going to walk back and get a realization why they went into Iconium. Go into chapter 13 in the 51st verse. And it says, but they shook the dust up of their feet against them and came unto Iconium. That, that, that's what you do when some folk don't, don't want to accept your testimony. That's what you do when people don't want to hear the word of God that had been laid on your life. That's what you do because that's what Jesus requires of the Christian when folk who want to reject his kingdom. You shake the dust off your feet. That's Matthew chapter 10, verse 14. That, that, that's where you stand and you are emboldened so you can walk into the first verse of chapter 14. Scripture said that they walk in boldly, and they spoke the word of God. It was common practice for, for Paul to go from synagogue to synagogue because the word of God was to go to the Jew first and then to the Gentiles. So, so it, it, they, they, Paul and Barnabas went into the synagogue with a purpose in mind. They had a purpose in mind in delivering Christ when they walked into the church. It's evident that Iconium was different than Antioch of Pisidia. In Antioch of Pisidia, Paul and Barnabas had to deal with people who didn't want to hear the word, but they wanted to enjoy the service. There, there, there are four words you need, to, you need to know now. Four words to know now. The first word is belonging. Belonging is acceptance as a natural member. Then there's membership. That's inclusion into a specific group or organization. Then there's fellowship. Fellowship is the active part of loving somebody through Christ with the ability to listen to one another. Then there is the negative thing of sin. It's the distinct ability to give up on one's calling, one's dreams, one's desires, because the challenges and changes seem too hard. If, 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 if and when God has put a calling on your life, your trust level has to go up tenfold if you are to believe that you are saved in your walk into eternal life. The word says in Proverbs chapter 3, trust in the Lord. With all your heart, lean not unto your own understanding, and in all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. Since, since, since we live in such a cynical world, we have the advantage of friends. We tend to lean more toward our friends than we do to open ourselves up to the Holy Spirit. As if our friends can direct what God has opened up into our lives. If, if we start showing the blessings of, that God has given us, some folk will not want to associate with you. When, when Paul and Barnabas was in Antioch and Presidia, Presidia, they were living a different way. Scripture said that they stayed more than a year and a half in the church. Going into church preaching things that, that others had not heard before. But they kept delivering Christ when they walked into the church. Let's look at verse 50, chapter 13. This is something that didn't sit right with the Jews. It says, but the Jews stirred up the devout and honorable women and the chief men of the city and raised persecution against Paul and Barnabas and expelled them out of their that's something when God has given you a word, you get
give it to somebody else and they won't accept it. They won't accept it because it's coming from you. But the realization is that Christ can deal through anybody to change somebody who's refusing to walk in his word. There's a, there's, there's a thing that happened years ago. <coughs> Say, I was in the office of the Marines. I went out. You know I was But when them guys went out on a Sunday, I thought my whole world was going to fall apart. Here I am on a Sunday night party. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I was speechless. I'm still speechless because the boys went out on Easter Sunday. <laughs> How can you just left church that morning and here we are rough shaking at 2 o'clock in the morning? No, we got to be to work at 6. That was my last Easter going out because you had to make a decision. If you were just going to continue to come to Christ, <clears throat> Or you was going to walk into church and sit. You have, that there should be a change every time you walk into the building. There should be a new word that you learn. There should be a new position that you take in your life that's going to cause you to walk a little bit stronger. In Acts chapter 14, verse 1, it says that they both went in together. Sometimes it's better to go to church with somebody else. Because if you ain't going to make it by yourself because you want to tip out right before tithes and offering, Praise the Lord. or if you want to tip out after the third song before the preachment comes, that's an issue with you coming to church and not being church into Christ. There's buildings with 15, 20,000 people. Not everybody in that building is going to help because they're going to church and not coming to Christ. Yeah, we can listen to good music, but if you are not changed when you walk out the building with an intent to save that person that you refuse to talk to, you're just church folk. See, 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 this is the difference between coming to church and coming to Christ. The difference is between knowledge and wisdom. Knowledge is the accumulation of gathered and learned information. Wisdom is the ability to use the information which has been learned, gathered, and utilized for the betterment of that individual. But then the second step of wisdom is having an ability to pour it out into somebody else's life. It's not judging them. It's asking them to rise to the standard that you found yourself. Yeah, you, you, you stumbled sometimes, but you're still here. Amen. You lost a job, but you got another one because Amen. you're still here. Amen. You lost a relationship. Woo, sometimes you got to get rid of some folk <laughs> so you can learn yourself so that better person can come into your life. That's wisdom. Now, now, then commitment falls into the picture. Commitment is that state of being emotionally, spiritually, intellectually bound to a specific person, reason, destination, or goal. Commitment is a state of being the person that anybody can call at any hour of the day and you will drop what you're doing so you can enter Christ into their lives. Commitment is that decision you made 10 minutes ago to sit here and ask the Lord to move in your life. Commitment happened when you opened your eyes this morning, deciding on what you want to wear because you wanted to come to church so you could meet Christ when you got here. Commitment is the people that stand downstairs before church even starts to pray for everybody in the building, everybody at work, everybody who's refusing to come to church. We introduce Christ in the spiritual so he can manifest in their physical lives. That's the difference between coming to church and coming to Christ. There are those people who saw Paul in the 13th chapter who refused to hear from Christ. Those Jews in verse 50 and 51 decided that church was more important to learn than learning more things about Christ. They decided to pick up all the rumors and lies and innuendos and flip them one more time to make other folks mad. Not because God was moving everybody else, but because they didn't want to be moved. So they wanted to destroy other folks' relationships with God. These are the 
people that come to church every Sunday, not just in this building, come to church every Sunday, on time, looking good, but won't participate in any program. Right. These are those people who come, do a little stuff in the program, and then complain about everybody else who's working on it. These are those folks who come to church, drop off their money, and still think that the money they give to God is theirs. But then they want to turn around and ask God to bless them. If we move in that manner, we become liars. Because if I say I love God and then I act contrary to the love and relationship I have with him, there is no relationship. There is not a woman in the world that a man or a man who say, girl, I love you, but he's dating 20 other women. <laughs> There is not a man in the world who would marry a woman and invite her mama in to stay and enjoy himself. I, I, I should even brought that up. Caravan, I know you're watching this. I'm sorry. I love you to death. Some things you try to keep down in the spirit of living. Caravan, I apologize.
but I'm being consistent. Because when, I, when we come to that great getting up morning, I don't want the responsibility of that big screen going on, and I refuse to tell a person about Christ. I refuse to tell a person about the testimony that I had that he changed me, because if this is a church, they got to meet the Christ inside this temple. The blessings we talked about, the blessings we pray about, the movements we would keep requesting of God in our families, those negatives are there because of us. Those negatives are there because that's the first thing we want to bring back into the relationship. Because when we talk to somebody, we always have to have a one-up on them. There's a difference in coming to church and coming to Christ and knowing what your calling is. The first calling of anybody who has accepted Jesus as their Savior is serving. No matter what title, no matter how many initials you got behind your name, no matter if you got a 14 carat ring on your finger. If you have been blood born and washed and sanctified and justified, your first calling is to serve everybody else. So it's time to serve them with the gift of God. So 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 story goes like this. Story goes like this. Booker T. Washington was a president of Tuskegee Institute back in the day. So he had a conference that he had to go speak at. So he got his bags together and he waited for his ride. So you know in the 50s and the 60s, we just couldn't ride anywhere. So he was waiting for his ride hours. He had to catch a train and his ride didn't show up. So he grabbed his bag and he started to walk to the train station, which was almost four and a half miles away. So he's walking and then a white man pulled up in a pickup truck. So him again, where are you going? He told him, I'm going to the train station. So he started riding, and all of a sudden, the white dude slammed on his brakes. Get out! Mm-hmm. Well, he said, get out! He said, yeah, get out! Because if I take you to the train station, the train station is across the street from the bar I'm going to. And if my friends and my brother see me with a black man in the car, they're going to ridicule me, talk about me all day long. But T said, man, look, you get out. They say, what? Look, say you get out and get on the passenger side, and I'm going to drive you to the bar that you're going to. So when you pull up, your friends and your brothers will think you rich enough to have a chauffeur. Sometimes in our lives, we have to take the sticker 